I want to be the Russians. No, I want to be the Russians. No, I want to be the Russians. No, I want to be the Russians. You can be the Russians. No, no, you have to be the Russians. No, 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 no you, you should be the Russians. No, no, you have to be the Russians. No, 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 no. Oh. Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies, joined as per usual with the glorious Mr. Chin. How's it going? We are going to be doing something a little bit different in today's video. Normally we play 40k or Old World or Age Sigma or anything like that. But in today's video, we have been tasked by the company Gale Force 9 to showcase their awesome new tank game, Clash of Steel. This game is a fairly interesting concept as it is uh, basically ran through an alternate history of World War II. That's the game that we're playing now, hence why the battle that's taking place in today's game is the Soviet Union v. the Americans. The Soviet Union? I thought you guys broke up. Yes, that's what we wanted you to think. <laughs> Although Mr. Chin is wearing a Captain America t-shirt, which was an interesting choice for him to pick for today, he will, inform, will be running the Soviet Union Russians as today because he is a quite a colossal fan of Russian tanks. Um, as goes his World of Tanks garage. Duh. Duh, comrade. Duh, comrade. And I shall be taking the uh, control of the American forces. And we're, yeah, we're just basically really excited to to play through this. Me and him are both actually really big tank fans. Yep. Um, we both have many hundreds of thousands of games played in World of Tanks Online. So uh, for me, when we were offered the opportunity to run this game through and show it to you guys, it was a no-brainer and we uh, we jumped at it. What do you think? Are you ready to rock and roll? Is the Russian forces ready to advance and crush? Hmm, da, crush capitalism. Oh. <laughs> I will try not to talk like this for the entire game, but maybe difficult. But maybe, maybe difficult. And, uh, I'm well, gonna take the hat off, it's exerting too much power over me right about now. <laughs> a little bit, yeah, yeah. So, uh, hopefully, you guys will uh, stick around and enjoy the game. Cheers, guys. This is the setup as it stands. Obviously, this is our first thing. It's actually our first foray ever into 15 mil gaming. So we did have to do our best when it comes to scenery. The trees are obviously a little out of scale, but you know, trees can be 200 feet tall or whatever. So it doesn't really make much of a difference. I think it actually suits and it works really well. I have these rocky outcrops, which I think is gonna be great for blocking line of sight. I don't think it takes us out of the game too much. And I did 3D print a little town, some nice houses to represent European style houses for a bit of crack. We got, chose a mission and we ended up going for the long run which obviously is lengthways deployment, which is pretty cool. And we have objectives right in the middle, one, two, three. And each objective has an extra additional objective card or what are those cards called? Yep, objective cards. So at the start of every turn, we will flip over one of these to basically learn an extra kind of rule or whatever it is for the game. So that's really cool. How you uh, work out mission is pretty easy, pretty standard. And we have deployed lengthways. So as you can see, this is me. I'll be looking down the table this way. And obviously I've got my T28s here. The idea is I'm gonna move them into this copse of trees, get some cover and try and snipe down at his tanks coming up the left flank. I have my T29s sitting in the middle. They're obviously gonna try and go and take the town and fight off his army. These are gonna be outnumbered and surrounded fairly quick. So I'm gonna be real cagey with their flanks and stuff. They're obviously my big heavy hitters. If I lose this unit, oh, it's pretty much done for me, I'd say. Then I have my beautiful little uh, M18 Hellcats, which will fly up the right flank. I'm trying to be annoying and try and get some side shots on his tanks uh, and be pretty useful, I, I guess. Mr. Dave has obviously set up his guys. He's got his, his T44s and his IS3s and all sorts. He's got basically everything set up. Nice formations, everything is in sets of threes. As you can see with me, I had seven tanks. He has 14 tank so it's a two to one game odd we didn't write army lists we're just using the entire content of the starter box set we assume obviously the american tanks are a little bit superior trained better equipment all that kind of stuff so perhaps the uh then this the numbers will tell and i will be able to prevail otherwise i'm going to get swamped by a million russian tanks and have a very bad day so that's what we're going to do so from here we are going to move on to uh turn one we have eight turns to play through mm -hmm. and the idea is that we just have to capture the objectives and whoever captures the objectives is going to win victory points and whoever has the most victory points at the end of the game wins so so as we mentioned at the start of the game as well, guys, so we're just playing with the standard core rules from the box. So we're not gonna be using things like commanders, unit leaders, and orders. So this is just a case of your first game of Clash of Steel, just to give you an idea and a taste of what the look and feel of the game is like and see if it's something you'd be interested in picking up yourselves as well. Yeah, that's perfect. And that's not something that we have just like decided to do. This is the core rules pamphlet that they give you, which is actually fantastic. You can start playing the game and then add more depth and variety to your games 
later. So we're going to start with the very basic rules, have a bit of fun, get the core mechanics down, and then later on we'll move on to more complicated, more advanced uh, versions of the game. So we're excited to bring that to you as well. Okay guys, let's get started. Okay guys, we rolled off to see who got first turn and the Americans did indeed receive first turn, so that's going to be me. So the first thing I'm going to do at the start of first turn is flip the first objective card over on objective one. The extra rule that has been employed due to this card being played is decoy. No victory points can be scored from this objective. So already off the bat, this game has taken a crazy turn in that the objective in the center of the game, in the center of the town, does not matter at all. That's crazy to me. I really like that. Changed the whole dynamic. Like I said, my T29s were set up to uh, try and take the town. Now the town's not important. So that's insane. I love that. Okay, cool. So it's very simple, uh, straightforward game system. Each turn it kind of revolves back and forth. So I move and shoot. Then Dave's turn, moves and shoot, end of turn, then comes back to me, move and shoot, so on and so forth. So it's very simple. I'm going to begin by moving my T28s. Now on the, on the card, it's very interesting because they give you all the different distances depending on what you're moving over, whether it be like, like normal terrain or whether it be on roads or whether it be on, you know, um, something that's like, like trees and stuff like that. So I really like that. So because I'm going through uh, terrain, I go 10 inches. So 10 inches will more than bring me to the edge. Oh of this copse of trees. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Have a barrel coming out through the uh, through the trees, which I think looks amazing. I like that. So my T28s will advance like that. My T29s, well, they are in open ground cross country, so they can go up to 16 inches. Now, the thing we have to consider as well is there's two types of movement. There's a tactical movement, which is just our standard 10 inch move, or if we want to go full speed to get a better battlefield position, we can go up to 14 or 20 or 24, but then we're four going shooting in that instance. Yes. So we have to decide if we're going to be just going, putting the foot down and pedal to the metal, or if we're going to try and get some, you know, shots on the move as we're advancing. So I'm going to, um, so 10 and 48 is 50, so be 58 inches for my range. Can I pre-measure in this game? Let's assume you can. Okay. So, all right. I'm actually in pretty good range here too. So I'm actually going to advance these three tanks up here. Try and get them in like this. Maybe I can try and get them in some cover. Yeah, I'll try and get these guys in cover as well. Try and keep myself a little bit safer from the, the Russian guns. Well inside my standard movement. Bring that card up. And then with the Hellcats, I'm just gonna be a little bit cagey with them until I see what he's doing. So I'm gonna fly them up here and keep them behind this big rocky outcrop here and try and keep them safe. So that's the end of my movement phase. I'm now gonna go on to my shooting phase. Okay, so now with me uh, in cover, I'm gonna start opening fire with things. So I'm gonna start with my T29. My 3 of T29s are gonna hit your unit of what, T44s? Is that what they are? Yep. So a unit of T44s. Now, usually we would have two shots a piece, but we have moved. That cuts it down to one shot a piece. We would hit the Russians on three under best circumstances, but because I moved, it's minus one, brings me to fours. And because it's long range, which is over 16 inches, it's also minus one, which means my shots hit on a five plus. Let's see if any of these can go through his tanks. So one of my rounds has managed to go through uh, the armor on a Russian tank. Now, traditionally, he would then try and protect himself, yep. which means he would roll a D6, add it to the armor value of his tank and try and beat the armor pen or the anti-tank number of my uh, shot. Now, his armor value is 10. Correct. If you get the best roll on a D6, his six brings you to a, to a maximum total of 16. Yep, and long range, I can add one, brings me to a total of 17. 17, beautiful. And my anti-tank range is 19. So no matter what, I cut through you like Swiss cheese. I don't like how those... I do not like, not enough vodka. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I get a firepower rating of two plus. So I basically just have to not roll a one now yeah. and your tank is in bits. Yes. And then we'll roll to see if you bail out or are destroyed. Correct. Okay, so two plus. So I did indeed roll a two. Actually, I don't, that is the roll to see if you bail That's out. it. So th I think that counts as the tank is then destroyed. So, so I have destroyed a T44 is... with my first round of shooting in the game. <laughs> that was beautiful. I love it. Uh, we'll then move across to the T28 and try and do something similar with line of sight and stuff with these guys. Their range is also 48. And I think I can see one of your IS-3s. You can indeed. So I'm going to try and fire off those shots. And I think it's a very similar situation. I have one shot standard and one shot moving. I have the must be in front arc, which I am. And if I get plus one because so threes turn, are those still threes? They might be so better cruise. These guys, you hit them on three. Yep. So threes becomes fours, long range fives, boom. One of them did indeed hit. 
Now okay. on anti-tank 19 as well, but I presume your IS-3s are much sturdier than your T-44s. They are, so the front armor of these guys is 14. Beautiful, so 14 plus long range. So that would go to 15, so I'd need to roll four will equal it and a five will beat it. So oh. no, nope. unfortunately rolls a two. So I need to roll my firepower check, which is a two plus. I have rolled a three, so I actually think I'm after taking an IS-3 so out that of is an IS-3 knocked out? I'm so sorry, Dave's favorite tank, and I'm after destroying one of them on turn one. Well, after the glorious duh, but the duh isn't in the game yet. It's okay. We can always make more. We can always make more. So, I decided to hide my Hellcats behind this uh, ridge area here, so that will be the end of my turn one. I must say, the American shooting seems to be pretty good. I've knocked out two tanks on turn one. We've got eight turns of this game, so that statistically means that I'm gonna kill 16 tanks. He only has 14, so potentially I could kill you all, but uh, you're gonna shoot me back now, aren't you? Yeah, that's the idea. Damn it. In Soviet Russia, tank shoots you. Oh no. Okay, so we're gonna go to Dave's turn one with his Soviet. Okay, so for the first Russian turn, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically shove the forces up the board and try and get, close the distance with the American tanks and try and overwhelm them with sheer weight of numbers because the, those shots coming in from those American tanks uh, really, really do hit home quite a bit. Yeah, they're, so, not, they're not messing around, are they? No, they really aren't. So I've got these guys here. Don't think I'm really gonna get any shots in at anyone. So I'm gonna send them on a cross country dash, which means that I can move them up to 20 inches. So, oh, so I'm gonna have these guys. Playing the objective game, is he? That's what they're thinking. So I'm gonna swing them up and swing onto objective number three so that when that's revealed at least i'll have some bodies hopefully still on the on the field to do something with it the is2s with their 122 millimeter cannons have a range of 28 inches so i'm going to be out of range so i'm going to advance these guys up Did so i'm going to 128 inches 122 millimeter cannons yeah but you said 122 inches and then i was like what the hell no range 28 <laughs> inches that's quite short range. I thought they were going to be a little bit more like tank destroyery. So no, these are more sort of like armored gun carrier type things. So oh, they're meant okay. to. Okay, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Like your assault kind of guns. Yeah. yeah Same yeah. as your um, T20. T28. T28. Got 48 inch range on mine. Yeah. So. And they're heavily armored, so they're meant to go forward and like they're bunker oh, buster yeah, type they, things. Yeah, little bulldogs like. Yeah, exactly. I like that. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to send the T44s up the flank as well. So. What's left of them? <laughs> yeah, there's still two of them there. They're fine. So they can do a cross country dash of 24 inches, not bad. So they're quite, quite nippy and speedy. So I'm gonna dash them up to here. And try and hug the cover so that at least they can't be seen as much by the big heavy American bruisers. And the ISU 130s have a range of 36 inches. So they actually will be in range. So I'm going to hold them where they are and I'll use them to take shots at the big heavy tanks in the middle. So and you're then, like, turn one, you're going to pip shots off at my, oh God, yeah, that's a problem. That, that's my thinking. And then the IS-3s, I'll shove them up into the... What's left of them? <laughs> the cover of the buildings as well. Taking and the small Italian village of Kumquat. Yeah, that sounds like an Italian word, right? I don't know, probably. I mean, how many people can we offend in this video in one go? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sure the leprechauns are coming out. <laughs> yeah, we're allowed to do that. That's our right. It's true, yeah. <laughs> Where's my pint of Guinness? Um, right, so we'll move on to my shooting. So I'm going to start with the three ISU-122s over here. Yes, sir. So they're going to start by firing their shots into the T-28s in cover there. So Beautiful. what am I normally hitting them so on? So you're hitting them on fours. Okay. So then you've got long range. So fives. And then cover. Sixes. Great. So Russian accuracy is the same in this as it is in World of Tanks. It's like... Yeah. I hope it's not though, because you're very good at accuracy in World of Tanks <laughs> for some stupid reason. No. Ping, 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 ping. So trees like Bastogne, trees and limbs are flying off everywhere. Yeah. But the, the crews inside are having a, a little nice cup of tea or something. Dave Dice. Yeah, Dave, Dave, Dave Dice, Dice never changes. Uh, so the IS threes, I'm going to make, keep making so many mistakes with the names of these guys. So the IS threes can draw a line of sight. Sorry guys, we forgot to change the angle for the shooting, so this should hopefully be a bit clearer for you. So the ISUs have fired off their shots, as we were saying, against the T-28s, but unfortunately didn't manage to make any shots to find the mark. The IS-3s, so only one of them can draw a line of sight, so he's going to fire a shot into the T-28. So again, 
hitting on sixes. Yep. So unfortunately, it doesn't manage a hit. Although you might be within. Oh, actually, might be within inches. sixteen inch range. Oh, just out. Just out. Okay, so unfortunately, that shot goes wide of the mark. So next, I'm going to be using the ISU 130s over here, and they're going to be targeting the three heavy American tanks over there. I really don't want to lose a T29 this early in the game. I, I feel like that's a real downfall for me if I lose that unit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens. So two, well, never mind. Two shots, a two and a one. Definitely Russian accuracy is Absolutely, kicking in Absolutely, yeah. Uh, that's all the shooting I have to do. Everything else has moved up into position. So now we move on to the American turn two. Yeah, Dave had a very tactical first turn, claiming objectives and pushing really far forward, making me sweat. Now I have to think about trying to deal with units on, on the sides and trying to get tanks into position to hit them without exposing my flanks to other tanks. So although he didn't do a very like crazy damage turn, I think he's played it very well. So I'm gonna have to try and deal with that. Yep. So just doing a quick check then at the end there. So I've got one of the objectives held by the unit over there, but I think I've actually moved these guys too far forward. I don't think they're actually in range because I'm assuming you measure from the center of the objective. I don't know, maybe just, let's just play it easy and just measure from the objective. So I think so. I claim that, so that gives me two victory points as the attacker. Okay, so my movement phase, I now have to consider his units as well as everything else. So what I'm gonna start with is I'm gonna play, I think this one is smart, my T28s are gonna do their 10 inch move. They're gonna come out of the trees and they're gonna come sideways. Cause you know, tanks can just drive sideways. It's like robot wars. And then they're gonna line up their shots on the uh, T54s. Are they T-54s? They are T-54s. I better yeah. move the cards up so we remember what each unit is. Yeah. And then my T-29s, I think I'm actually going to leave them where they are. And my idea for this turn is to try and make this unit not be here anymore. So both of these and my T-29s, I think I'm going to open up on this squadron and try and remove them from play. If I can do that, that would be amazing. And my Hellcats, I'm tempted to just go a bit nuts and uh, get in behind these guys with some like flanking maneuvers. Because <laughs> obviously I've got a move of 12 so come flying around here pull a handbrake turn and and then so can i front facing turn armor to shoot so yeah so technically you are in my side or rear armor there, I think so you the same be. for both they're both like same armor value yep. to worry too much about that but yeah so that should be very interesting and like i said these guys aren't actually going to move they're just turning their cannons this direction is the plan get out of the way tree Give them a volley. It's like the Bismarck opening up with a broadside. Like, oh, that's, boom, boom, boom. that's terrifying. <laughs> so I'm going to go into my shooting phase now and see Before if we I do can... that though, we better just quickly flip. Oh yeah, the, the objective card. Two. So objective two, immediate. This objective can only be scored from until the start of turn six and has worked double the victory points. I think until and, turn yeah, six. Yeah, seven and eight, you can't claim this objective. So it's worth okay. double points up until that point. So did I manage to be clever and get myself in range of the objective? Let me just move these forward a little bit more so I'm not stupid. So now if I manage to do some damage to these guys, perhaps I will claim that objective for myself. The shooting phase is now occurring. The T-28 are gonna power through and hit these guys. So traditionally they would hit on, uh, what, threes for you? Threes, yes. And their only minus is the fact that I moved. Yes. So fours. Fours. So, okay, so fours. Oh, a two and a one. He manages to Oof. be a bit risky there. That's okay. Um, these three guys are gonna open fire on you as well. They are still outside of the half range of the 16 inches, so there will be minus one for that. But because they haven't moved, it's two shots apiece. So oh no. Six shots and they're hitting you on fours. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can get a good through. I've managed to get three of them through. I think that's once again, you don't get an armor save from that because I'm anti-tank 19. So front armor is 12. 12 plus, plus six, six is 18 plus one would be 19 if it's at a long range. So I need sixes. So if you manage to roll a six, then the best I can do is make you bail out. Yes. Okay, so you roll three dice and you're looking for sixes to save your tanks. Yep. No. No. So that means that I just need to roll not ones. I've just absolutely annihilated all three of those tanks. So that squad is wiped Smoked. out. Smoked! In spectacular fashion. Apply one volley from a, a squadron of T-29s. You gotta love them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and on this flank, we have my two Hellcats who are coming around to try and shoot the side slash rear of the T-44. Now, because I moved, it's only one shot a piece. Mm -hmm. I hit you on a three, uh, four because I moved. Yep. If that's the guy, I don't have the... 
I don't have the plus one to hit for moving on these guys. So these guys are hit on three. So yeah, so if you've moved, you you just you're hitting me as whatever it is you normally see, hitting me on threes. So one of them has managed to go through. The anti-tank value of my tank is 13. Okay, so the rear armor is seven. So I would need to roll a five a to a five or a six. No, so five a six. 13 and you're seven, aren't you? Yes, so yeah, six and six. six. Six to seven is 13. So if you roll a six, it's, you can only bail out. What else if I roll the dice properly? Nope. Unfortunately, Unfortunately not. not. Now, my um, firepower on this one is actually three plus. So one or two will be a bailout. And unfortunately, it's a five. So I'm for so another T44. T44 is gone. Boop. And then that is also going to be a motivation check, I believe, for the squad to see if the last guy fights on or if he flees out and decides to you make a run for it, yeah. Make a run for okay. it, yeah. With that, I believe I claim this objective. Yes, you do. And I get double victory points. With I made this token wrong, don't judge me. So it has to be upside down. So I claimed two victory points for me. And Dave claimed two victory points turn for his turn. Yep. Two, turn one. Turn one, yep. So that's the end of my turn two. And let's move on to Dave's turn two and see if he can uh, redeem himself a little bit. So he has a motivation of three. So I need to roll a three or better to keep her in the fight. Otherwise, he's going to bail out. So he rolls a five, so he's all good. And he doesn't have to take that every turn. So I think it's only in the turn in which that's, that effect okay, that's applies. Okay, that's okay. And so he's now decided he is going to avenge his fallen comrades. Now I need to decide what I'm going to do in terms of movement. So I'm going to hold the T-44 where he is, because he fires two shots when he's stationary. So I'm going to fire shots back into those Hellcats. Potentially couldn't kill both Hellcats. That's what I'm hoping. The IS-3s, their rate of fire halted and moving is the exact same, so there's no benefit really holding them in place. So yeah, I'm going to... If you come to here, you could get the side and rear of the Hellcats. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm going to swing these guys into the city. Get a bit of protection from mm -hmm. both flanks there. I have no platoon over there at all anymore. No. Uh, and then the ISU-122, so the other tank destroyers... They won't really have range to see anyone this turn, so I'm going to put them just on full advance. So they're going to go full 18 inches up. So the next turn, they'll have hopefully something that they can shoot. Actually, no, what they'll do is they'll move up and... Oh, yeah. Tokyo drift their way onto the objective. And hopefully be able to claim that. And then the ISU 130s. So again, they're kind of just holding position at the back. I'm hitting on fives long range and cover. So I may as well hold around because if I move, I'm going to be hitting on sixes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're going to start then over here with the T-44 firing two shots into the Hellcats. So what am I hitting the Hellcats on normally? So Hellcats normally are hitting on a four plus and that's it. So it's just straight up four plus for you. Okay, so two four Ooh. plus, that's a bit better. So yes, two yes. sixes. So my anti-tank is 13 because I'm quite a light tank. What okay. is your penetration? So my guys are anti-tank 12. Oh no, it's my side, I apologize. Yeah. So my side armor is, wait, what? My side armor is one. It's one. <laughs> oh no. My front armor is only two. Yes, you are a light scouting tank. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was, I, I was like, you're only 12. Ha, lol. Wait a minute. I can't save that either way. Nope. Even, though, even though they're both through the front, I couldn't save. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so now let's see what we can do to those Hellcats. They're so. both dead. <laughs> uh, no, they're not. So my fire, fire power is three. So one is destroyed and one is only bailed out. Oh yeah, so that is, that T-44 is the hero of the game so far. So let me just destroy that, add a little bit of cotton wool for the uh, destroyed one, and then I'll have a bailed out counter next to the second tank, which I'll have to check for at the end of this turn to see if he can get back in his tank or whether the whole unit's gonna be white, which is pretty cool. So, wow, I love that. Yeah. They never, never mess with the Russians. No, yeah. just took a swig of his vodka and he's like, oh, I've got this. <laughs> Pretty much. So now we're going to have the IS-3s. So 
So they're going to fire their two shots into the sides of the T28s. So, so side hitting... armor is actually eight. So these are quite well armored. My front was 17 though, which I was much more comfortable with. Yeah. <laughs> so hitting hit me you on a four. Four normally, fives for long range and sixes because I'm a slow firing gun. So I'm hitting you on, so that's plus one again. So I'm hitting you on sixes normally. Yeah. Okay, uh, and rate of fire when moving is two shot, a uh, shot a piece. So two shots into their side armor. Oh, what one manages to hit. Oh no! Uh, what strength is your so gun? The anti tank is fourteen. So if I roll a six on this dice, the worst that can happen is I bail out. I don't. It is just 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 dis dis throw. Oh no, you have to roll a dice. I have to roll a dice. So firepower two up. It is. So, so yeah, I'll take a piece of cotton wool, and unfortunately, one of the T28s has been annihilated by some awesome IS firepower. So it's a bit more cotton wool than that. And this poor guy, what are you doing to me here? Me... Oh no, we won't, we'll, we'll be generous with the cotton wool. Yeah, this is a big tank that just got duffed. <laughs> totally fine. Cause... Cause... Let's be honest, our boss is gonna add all these magic special effects in post, isn't that right? That was your job. <laughs> was <laughs> so that's the end of the russian turn to, oh no sorry just to finish off my shooting phase i've got my isu 130s over here which are going to again fire their shots into the trees at the heavy tanks the t29s so because i'm at long range and because they're in cover i'm going to be shooting hitting on fives so two shots from the tank destroyers one of them does find the mark. Indeed it does. Uh, so the anti tank strength. value is 18. Ho ho! So my front armor is 14. So I get a four. The best that can happen is a bailout. What I really want to see is a five or six on one of these dice. Yes. I got a five. So ching flies off, knocks an old oak down, splits it in half. And um, but my tank is still in one piece at the moment. Perfect. Woo! And I think that is the end of my turn too. So, so now I need to take a bailout check to see if my tanks are gonna get back into the tank yes. or whether they just count as being destroyed and are removed. Yeah, motivation. Okay, so I am a motivation of a four plus on the Hellcat. Come on, baby, I got a one. So unfortunately not, the bailed out crew of this tank are in no mood to re-engage with this fight. I think they just immediately count as destroyed as well. I think they just count as bailed out still. Do you so think so? No, it's, it's, so it's a case of they can do nothing next turn. So they're still just hunkered down in the cover trying to avoid being shot so it is, remains bailed out and can't do anything until on the, oh you're totally right apologies so yes it is still it's not destroyed it is still a bailed out tank that just can't do anything until i pass a bailout check yes in one of the future turns okay At the end of that so i score double victory points for that one because i need doesn't have any active tanks that can oh, steal yeah. it so that you're totally a totally four. correct yeah and i've got my three uh, tokyo drifting Deja vu ISUs on the other objective, which brings me to a total of five victory points. Okay, it comes into American turn three. Um, I'm gonna flip the uh, extra rule that's on objective three for this one, and that is high ground. The plus one penalty to hit at long range applies at ranges over 20 inches instead of 16 if shooting at tanks within this objective. So this objective is harder to hit. So if you're shooting at one of you guys, uh, a tank within four inches of it, long range counts as 20. That's an interesting extra rule. That's nice. I like that. That's cool. So now it's going on to my movement phase and I have to try and figure it out. Because obviously I have a lot less tanks than Dave. So I have to make like really like educated decisions as to what to do. I don't have a lot of tanks to throw around. My Hellcats are pretty much gone. So I've lost a unit. Basically I've got four active tanks. That's it. Four. <laughs> So I've got to try and use them smartly. So I'm very tempted to drive up my T28 up to here, rotate and get a side shot on these, also bringing me in range of the objectives. And then once again, the 3 of Bismarck shots to once again fire six rounds into them as well and try and get rid of those. Mm -hmm. And just try and get rid of another unit. That does leave his big, big unit of uh, ISs uh, sitting in the, the thing, which of course will retaliate against the, uh, the T29s and they'll be real up close and personal. It's a bit nerve wracking, but I think you want to have to try and weather that storm because I think standing still for double shots is just worth it. So this T28 is going to grumble forward Ooh. and it's going to rotate around like this. Mm -hmm. So I will be in range of claiming and holding the objective, of course, and obviously got a monster side shot on. Like I should just penetrate like through and through and through and just take all three of you out with that one. <laughs> Um, T28 card goes up with that. 
T29s are gonna stay where they are. Hellcat's currently still bailed out. So that is all of the movement that I'm gonna do. So now we're gonna go on to the shooting. I'm gonna start with my first round, which is the round from the T28. And it is firing at this guy here, this uh, IS. Yeah, it's you, sorry. I honestly feel like I should auto hit this. My barrel is almost touching your tank, but unfortunately <laughs> that's not how the game works. So I hit you on threes. Yep. And then movement is four. Fours. So fours to hit you. I did indeed roll a four. Yep. My anti-tank range is 19. What's your side armor? Eight. Can you roll an 11 on one dice? In Soviet Russia. <laughs> <laughs> if I have enough vodka, maybe. <laughs> okay, so uh, obviously it just goes through and through. So I just need to not roll a one. I rolled a two. So uh, one of your ISUs, uh, 122s, has been destroyed Alrighty. by the glorious T28. And of course, my glorious T29s, which I knew were going to be my favorite unit in this game. I shouldn't have said that. I'm going to jinx them now. I'm like, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to open up with their broadside. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, and they're uh, rolling at these guys. Really interesting because now that, that rule would have almost come into effect. If they were within 16 inch range, it will be 20 inch range for the high ground, the minus yep. one to hit. So they're still gonna be at the minus one, but that's it. So once again, it is six shots. They are hitting you on threes, fours for long range. That's everything, yeah? Yep. So let's see if we can get a couple of shots through on the remaining two ISUs. So we have managed to get four shots through at anti-tank value 19 onto the front of your armor, which is? Uh, it's only front armor nine. So can you roll a 10 on four dice, on one dice? So it's so the last. No. So all you do is not roll ones. So I did roll one one, but it doesn't matter because three of them did indeed go through and wipe the ISUs. So that squad is now gone. Well, that squad is indeed now g -g gone. So there is now a, like literally a tank graveyard around objective three. Yep. Like considering the game started with 14 tanks to seven. Yep. I'm cut down to four tanks and you are cut down to five tanks yep. in three turns. Yep. This game moves fast. Yes. There must be a bunch of extra special rules. I'm sure we will learn them the next time we play the game, but uh, it's kind of insanity, but it's really cool. Really enjoying it so far. Obviously, because I'm shooting and destroying loads of Russian tanks. So no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go over to Russian turn three. Cool. Sorry, just a last bit on the end of my turn three. I claimed one victory point for the objective here. I don't have that one over there because I'm bailed out, but I can take a bailout check. I rolled a five, which successfully means that my tank crew climbs back into the Hellcat and it is now a fully operational tank again. Now it's fully operational and surrounded by Russian tanks, but well, that's neither here nor there. I do have another tank in the game now, which means I'm back up to five active tanks. So Russian turn three needs to now, as Andy was saying, having to be ta tactical with his few remaining tanks, I need to do the same because my Russian made tanks are showing their shoddy craftsmanship and are starting to fall apart on the battlefield fairly quickly. You know how so. they say quantity has quality all own? But what if you don't have quality or quantity anymore? Mm. <laughs> but we still have vodka. <laughs> we still have vodka, yes. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and use the IS-3s to hopefully deal with some of the T-29. So I'm going to play a little bit aggressively. I'm going to bring the I, uh, the two IS-3s out of the village into the side arc of the T-29s and hope that their front armor will protect them from the return volley. It's a great idea. My side armor is only seven on those guys. So like you have the potential of actually wiping out one or two T-29s, which would be a turning point of the game kind of that, thing. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm going to then bring the ISU-130s up a little bit further. And between them and the T-44, I'm going to try and take out that last Hellcat and keep scoring those double points from objective number two Beautiful. to keep my lead. That's what I'm kind of thinking. Yep. So we're going to run with that. So I'm going to advance the ISUs up. I suppose that's an important thing to note. Even though we're going into your turn three, which means you're technically still a turn behind me. Yep. You're still winning on victory points five to three. Yep. So... And it is a very objective points game. So yeah. playing the basic version of the game, as we say, we don't know if there's extra bits that go into it, but it's very much about your control of the objectives. It's not how many tanks you kill, it's what you manage to do with the tanks you still have left alive. That's those guys moved up. The T-44 is going to hold position so he can fire off his two shots into that Hellcat. And then the so IS-3. Where are these cars going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then these guys can move 10 inches, so that'll put them out to there. Yep. Okay. 
uh, and I'm hoping that, that other T28 tank destroyer is kind of stuck in the tank graveyard. He's pretty mangled. Like I, I don't know the rules for moving through it, but as a, an objective, like common sense, there's no way I'm moving forward and trying to turn around and get a rear shot on them or anything like that. They, yeah. He is stuck there as a claiming an objective tank for this game now, I think, unless I decide to drive him around. But I think the objective is more important for me at the moment. Yeah. See, it was all Russian tactical yeah. duty. <laughs> We'd lock in your one tank with our dead six tanks for tactical reasons. Yeah, it is effectively dead, but we didn't need to pay the money for the shells. <laughs> <It's great. laughs> okay, so I'm going to move on to my shooting phase, and I'm going to start with the T-44. So again, firing the shots into the Hellcat, hitting it on threes. Uh, so only managing one hit, but it does go straight through its frankly laughable armor yeah uh, and i need a three or more to destroy it Ta -ba 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 -boo! it is destroyed so that unit is now wiped so my first full unit casualty has happened my second hellcat has been destroyed which means that he has he has really honestly secured that double objective objective yes. double point scoring objective so like to me i've like fly this tank back and hide behind this rock or something and just claim double objectives for the next five turns. Yeah, next I'm going to move on to my IS-3s. So good. firing into the side armor of the T-29s. Which is armor seven. You hit so, me on a four. So because I did move, I'm going to be hitting you on fives. So two shots. So one, one finds its mark. What strength are you? So armor anti-tank is 14. And I'm seven, so I can't roll seven on one dice. Okay. So therefore it's just Firepower 2 plus, so destroy one of the T29s. So unfortunately one of my T29s, my beautiful tanks, it's a beautiful tank, has been uh, absolutely wrecked, which has really even the odds for uh, the, the kind of face off of the two big boy units, the IS-3s and the T29s. Can you weather the storm? I don't know. That's the question. Now the final act we'll be seeing if the two ISU-130s in the back, have they line of sight? Yeah, so yeah. They still do, so we're gonna fire our two shots now. Because they moved this turn, they're only going to be hitting on sixes, but. Add those together, you get a six. Mm -hmm. I like to keep those. That's how, that's how math works, right? Yeah, right, of course. So that is the end of my turn. I have no bailout checks to do, so at the end of that, I score an additional two victory points from that, which brings me up to a grand total of seven victory points. You know, more than double the objective points uh, from me, so that's, that's no good. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> um, Jesus, okay. Turn four for the Americans. Um, like I said, I'm currently working with three tanks left now. Oof, oof. Which means can I legitimately leave that T remaining T-28 stuck there holding it? Is that a better, it probably still is a best use of his time to sit there and just see what I can do with my T-29s. I'm just gonna be brave. I'm gonna I'm gonna waste turn four trying to deal with your ISUs, and if I can if I manage to deal with those, then I'll go hunting and trying to take this objective off you with the with the last two tanks if I can do that. So that's what I'm cool. gonna do. No movement. I'm gonna go straight into my two two twenty nines, two remaining two twenty nines, firing two shots apiece, short range, nothing stopping me, hitting you on threes. Mm -hmm. Um, oof, goo, one miss, three hits. Okay. Uh, armor anti-tank 19. What's okay. your front armor? So front armor is 14. So I need fives and sixes. So fives mean they only bail out and sixes mean they would ricochet. Yes. No, all of them go through. Arm power two plus. Unfortunately, both of your uh, remaining IS threes get absolutely annihilated by the sheer and awesome power of a T29. I'm playing my T29 in World Tanks tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good showing. That's kind of all I wanted to achieve this turn was to remove his big threat. Uh, he is now down to three remaining tanks on the table. Yep. To match my three remaining tanks. So he's really running out of tanks fast. Unfortunately, that turn, I only claimed one objective, bringing me up to a grand total of four, and he's still on seven. So yep. it's gonna be a case of trying to wrestle that really dangerous objective off him in the next couple of turns, and then kind of take back up that lead that he has. So let's try and do that. Russian turn four. So what I'm thinking for this turn is I'm gonna have my T-44 is going to fall back and take cover and basically hide from the approaching T-29s and try and score as many victory points as I can before it is inevitably cracked through from a shot from one of them. The ISUs are going to advance up slightly. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the ISUs into cover 
so that when they're shot back, at least they're a little bit harder to hit. Yep. And they're going to fire some shots and hopefully slow down the T29s and hope for a lucky shot. So I'm going to reposition these guys into the cover of the yeah, tree. The tree slider to put a barrel through. You got to do it. It just looks really cool. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> so my two tank snipers are in there. And then my T44 is going to move at full reverse. Beep, beep, beep. And like the interesting thing about this game right now is like, like honestly, you're winning in objectives, but you're nervous on tanks. Yeah. But your ISUs over here could kill both the T29s this turn and then it would just be game over. Potentially. Like this game is so like... On a knife edge. Oh, like the whole thing feels like on a knife edge at every... Yeah. It's incredible. So we're going to go straight on to the shooting. Uh, the ISU 130. So I'm hitting you guys on sixes. Oh, fours, five, sixes, yeah. Yeah. So let's hope for a bit of luck. No, unfortunately not. So, oh, that is that is everything I was able to achieve in my turn. So I've managed to pull these guys back. These guys are in cover. And that brings my total to nine victory points now. Ouch. Nine to my four. So now it's a case of over to the Americans for turn five. Okay, let me see what I can do. Now, I really, really just want to sit in place with my pair of T29s and um, fire off at the ISUs in the trees, but it's just not tactically smart. I need to try and deal with his T44. So my two T29s are going to shuffle sideways out of the trees into cover, or into the open, sorry, and they are going to do a little sneaky corner creep because it looks really cool and then they're gonna they're gonna start blasting at the t44 because i moved it's only one shot a piece and um, i moved which is minus one and then you are actually going to be over 16 inch range aren't you y yes so minus two so hitting you on threes fours fives mm -hmm. okay so two shots hitting on fives i managed Oof. to hit one of them with armor penetration 19. it's gonna go straight through so don't roll a one i rolled a one <laughs> So you bail out yes. of uh, that tank. This tank is the hero of the game for me so far. At least he's not going to claim an objective. This is true. Um, which is important for me. I didn't get close enough to claim the objective over there, but I will claim my objective that you can see off camera with the T28. He's basically not doing anything except being a one victory point a turn objective grabbing tank because he's kind of trapped in behind all the dead Russians. So yep. that is the end of my turn five. It's going to go into the Russian turn five to see what Dave can do. So I think the game is going to be won or lost based on what happens here. So similar to how Andy has basically thrown everything in with the T29s, I'm going to have to do the same. So the T, the ISU 130s are going to come out of the trees to reinforce the T44 here. So I'm going to bring them up here, form a firing line, hopefully take out one of the T29s, force him to take a morale check to see if he needs to then bail yeah. out of the fight. Is what I'm kind of hoping for, but we'll see. So to start off, these guys move up to their 10 inches. I forgot to roll that for my Hellhound. The Hellcat, when was the last tank? No, it passed it. It was fine. It, oh, yeah, oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The, the bailout check. The bailout check. It was, was bailed out. It didn't need it to. It was bailed out. Yeah, yeah. Brings them up to here. It's not close enough to claim the objective, unfortunately, but it does mean they're at least in with a shot of firing some shots into these guys. So these guys have moved up. He's bailed out, so I'll roll for him at the end of the turn. These guys have moved, so it's going to be at minus one and long range. So long range, so twos. So hitting you on sixes again. Sixes again. No, unfortunately oh. not. <laughs> Both shots go wide. So the last thing I wrote to see is if these guys get back into their tank, which they do not. So he is still bailed out. Still bailed out. So the crew are still gone from there. I don't claim that objective because I don't have anything in range of it. Yep. So I remain on nine points, and Andy remains on his five, and this goes into Russian turn or American, American turn six. Yes, sir. We are into turn six of the Americans. We only have turn two turns left. I think it's actually important for me to run up and take this objective this turn mm -hmm. because this is the last turn. It's worth double points. Yes. Because it's after turn six, it becomes a normal objective again, right? Yes. So I'm giving up my four shots to jump down to two shots yep. in order to claim the uh, objective. So I just have to get within that range, which means I only, I'm going to go seven forward, so I'm within an inch more. Oh. Line up my pair of T29s for one of the last salvos of the game, mm -hmm. and I'm going to try and hit your IS2. So I am moved 
for minus one and that's it. Okay. So I'm hitting you on fours, yes? Yes. Okay, so let's see if these T29 can do a glorious work once again and get a pair of fours. No, a pair of twos. <sighs> yeah, so unfortunately, I don't. I think it's only fair that happened to you earlier in the game as well. Um, so I get double victory points for that. So I get up to seven. Yep. Um, I'm holding that objective. And then um, um, it goes over to Soviet turn six. Yes. So we're leaving the angle of the camera quite tight on this particular part of the table because it's pretty much the, the last and most pivotal fight. This is the most important one, we feel. Yep, absolutely. There's no real benefit to my guys moving. Well, uh, you want to claim the objective, don't you? You're yeah, not in range that. that true. <laughs> so I will have them. Yeah, so they're in range. They're now in range to claim the objective. if you kill one objective. of me, you claim the objective for two. Yeah. But otherwise so, it's a draw, nobody gets it if it's the same amount of tanks. I think so, yeah. Or is it there like goes, some sort of command value or something? I think it goes unclaimed. So, so that's all the movement I can do, because um, this guy's still bailed out. So shooting, I'm going to obviously fire both shots into the T29s. T29s. So I'm going to be hitting them on fives because I had to advance up. And no, again, no, no shots managed to find no. the mark. Okay, a bailout check. So bailed in, get back in the fight. No, no, unfortunately not. So no one claims that objective this round. I don't think And it so. now goes to Soviet turn, or uh, American, American turn, turn seven. Yes, sir. Uh, and that means that we're going to be, that now goes to a single uh, victory point each turn for that. Yes, yes. Okay, so I am not gonna move. I am holding the objective. My glorious T29s are just gonna open up with their beautiful bra -ba -doo 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 -doo. Four shots. Yep. Hitting you on threes. Yep. Ooh, come on. That's not what you wanted to see. No, it's really that's, not. That's really good. I armor value 19. What's the front armor? Not 19. Is it nine? Nine. So can you roll a 10 on? No. Let me just roll not ones. You're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, d I don't think I have enough cotton wool for all of this. <laughs> Unfortunately, your pair of IS-130s does indeed get destroyed. Now, here's the super funny, super interesting thing, which I don't know how this works, right? Okay. So we go to the end of my turn. Yep. I go to eight. Yes. You're on 11. Yes. So. No, I'm currently on nine. Oh! I didn't get to 11 because I didn't score at that point. You had got the... Um, if you were on 11 and they bailed back in, you could just flee for the rest of the game as long as it turns for me to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't now, so you've got one busted up tank with a bailed out crew left on the tabletop. Yeah. So do you, do you roll now at the end of this turn as well, or is it just the end of your it's turn? It's the end of my turn. So we'll go to Soviet turn seven and so, see if that makes a difference. Essentially what will happen is because Soviet turn seven is just my guy trying to get back into his tank, which he now decides to get back into the tank after the other tanks are blown out of it. Yeah, you don't get to do anything. So I then it would immediately go back into my turn and yes. my T29s would be like, um, three hits, a you're exploded. <laughs> Holy hell, T29s are busted. Good talk. Hold on, hold on. Let me get the... <laughs> Let me get the cotton wool for effect. You can't have a good dead tank without some cotton wool on the Absolutely. table. Absolutely. Oh, mother of God. I'm going to do a quick recap of the table in a moment and give you guys some indication of to the carnage that does exist on this table. This is the table at the end of the game. So as a quick recap, the Americans deployed along this particular short board edge and advanced into the town. It was very interesting turn one, finding out that the objective one was a decoy, which means it wasn't worth any points, which can clearly define how the battle went. There's no dead tanks in the middle, monumental amount of dead tanks on both the left and right flank as we were hotly contesting those objectives. The left hand side was absolutely insane. Two basically batteries of three tanks wiped out. I obviously lost one of my T28s over here. The remaining T28 stuck in the tank graveyard, claiming this objective for the remainder of the game. Poor ISUs got finished off in the center ground. I lost one of my T29s here, and then the T29s advanced to the right flank, and I basically mopped up here as well, wiping out pretty much all the tanks. I actually don't know how many tanks the T29s destroyed in this game, but I feel like it was pretty much all of them. It was the vast majority. They took the center and the, the left flank, or the, like, your, your right flank, basically. They killed all three of them. Yep. They killed two of them. Yep. They killed two of them. Yep. So that's two, four, five, six, seven. Then they advanced to this side, eight, nine, ten. Yep. So they killed ten of your 
14 tanks in this game. Yes. And they lost one of their squadron. Yes. If anyone wants to play this game as the Americans, T-29s I feel like are where it's at. These guys are unreal. So yeah, the game ended up technically, we would have one more turn to claim an objective each. So I would go eight to nine to 10. So even though there's a devastation on the board, Dave finished on nine and I finished on 10 objectives for this game. So it was a really close fought, hotly contested game. Yep, if, if I had been able to hold on to the double objective one more turn, I would have actually managed to win the game. Yeah, I couldn't have caught up with you. I don't think wiping out the opponent actually uh, counts for anything. It's purely down to your Well, you would have still had the Hellcat, which would have just driven, driven off. Oh yeah, the, 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 the T-44 would have just been doing donuts in the car park. Yeah crashing through buildings and trying to stay alive. You know, the last scout left alive in a game of World of Tanks trying to run for his life. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so that was the, so we're gonna come back with the final thoughts and recaps on this game now in a moment. Cool. I also think his bad luck was due to the t-shirt he wore while he was playing Russians. Yeah. Just, just pointing that out. Yeah, it's entirely know. possible. <laughs> Okay guys, so that brings us to the end of the first ever game on the channel playing Clash of Steels. Once again, a big thank you. This was a sponsored video by uh, Gale Force 9, who are the guys who produce this game. So they approached me very kindly and asked me if I'd like to make a game for it. And uh, I was like, sure, I love tanks, so let's do it. I'll give you my two favorite things, then you can let me know what your favorite things are. So my two favorite things about this game are how easy it is to learn how to play. And yep. I know people say that a lot about games like this, but considering we just played an entire fun game with this, it took us both, what, two minutes to read this? Yep. Well, you two minutes, me like eight minutes to read this. Um, and then we knew how to play the game um, and we were very, we didn't even start, like we didn't have to reference the rules over and over again. We just used the cards on the table and that's all we needed to play a game. And it was Flew awesome. through. And I'm sure there's many nuances in the, the core rule book and I am intrigued to find out what those are, but it was awesome. My second favorite thing is the entire game was on a knife edge. Yeah. Like a volley can change the whole game. Like. If he had have luckily taken out my T29s early in the game, which could have happened, he fired mm -hmm. out a bunch of times. Yep. It, the game would have been completely different. Same as the opposite. My T29s, I think, overperformed. They did start killing 10 of your tanks, that yep. squadron. Insane. So I do like that. Even when I was coming around, I was like, I'm going to deal with you on that objective. And I'm going to claim the last objective and I'm going to win the game. I'm like, but he could just wipe me out with those tanks. This is, oh. So those are my two personal favorite things about this game. Yeah. For anything? me, I think that like one of them similar to you was like, so easy to pick up and play like i had no idea coming over how easy or difficult it was going to be to learn a new game but like that straight away we were into it we could see the intricacies of like this is why you'd position tanks in certain ways here yeah here's why you're moving them in certain ways here and here do you sacrifice your shooting do you sacrifice your moving and it's quite easy to pick up and play and the other thing i like is it just felt like you were driving around and shooting tanks yes. every shot you fired you felt it when it went through the armor yes and i felt it yeah. when it went yeah. through my armor so yeah it was it was a lot of fun to pick up and play like it was a very easy game and i, I could see it being quite attractive to newcomers as well like this could be something that somebody if they're interested in getting into you know miniature war gaming yeah. this might be a good jumping off point because it's yeah. it's like a slightly more detailed board game in terms of complexity but not that much more even and there's levels that you can then add on to add extra complexity that we didn't delve into today imagine so. even as like an introduction for let's say an older guy who does historicals wants yeah. to introduce a younger person to it like historicals is quite a big complicated game and it's kind of hard to get your head around so perhaps a game like this which is still historically based a little bit off with the extended thing but it did just feel like a world war ii game to us yep um you know, driving around the table, rolling some dice and having some tanks blow might get them intrigued and interested to learn about history and then once again, pursue more historical based games. Yep. I think it's fantastic. Like I want to play bolt action now. I have like, I want to paint bolt action now. Yep. It's just how it works. It, it, it encourages your creative juices and makes you want to go forward. So yep. and like guys like us who've played a lot of things like World of Tanks and computer games and stuff like that, we can see how some of this would, some of that kind of knowledge kind of transfers across because some of the tanks in that game perform the same kind of way as they do <laughs> in this. <laughs> You know, Russians, not very accurate, but when they hit, they hit Ooh. hard. Yes, yes. Okay, so that's, I think, the end of our thoughts and feelings. I really, like I said, I, I really enjoy it. I would recommend this game if it's something you're interested in picking up and trying out. Absolutely. Um, I definitely think it's worth your time. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. If you want to ask us any questions about Clash of Steel or anything else in the comments below, do write it down in the comments and either of us will get back to you. We answer every single comment that gets put on the channel. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it on all future uploads. And um, yeah, make sure that you check out the link below to check out the Gale Force 9 website and check out the uh, the different options that they have available. I believe they have 144 tanks available currently. So there's a lot to choose from. That's a lot of tanks. That's a lot of tanks. That's a lot of tanks. I don't think I'll Cromwell's.
KV twos. KV two. I want KV twos. No Churchill, no. No, I want KV twos. I'll give you gold rounds for your turn. I want KV. Okay, KV twos. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.